my happiness, and, right, but also my great honor to find myself near the professors and students of this important seminary, of this important theological school and seminary. The famous theological school of Boston. Idate ελάχιστα πράγματα από αυτή από αυτό που είναι μελημένο τόπο το σημαν, ελάχιστα εικόνες και γύρω από το μοναστήρι και εδώ στη μέση μέσα στη μέση. You saw just a few images of the life around the monastery of Sinai, both inside the monastery and the surrounding environment. Με λίγα λόγια, αυτό το μοναστήρι γράφει μια ιστορία μοναδική στον κόσμο. To say it in just a few words, the history of this monastery is unique in the world. Και είναι το αρχαιότερο μοναστήρι που υπάρχει στην Ορθόδοξη Ανατολή. And it's the oldest monastery that exists in the Orthodox East. Ο πρώτος που έτσι εννοώ είναι η Αγία Λένη, όπως είδατε μέσα εκεί στη Βάτα του Παρακλήσεου, η Αγία Λένη το 4ο αιώνα. The first person to build a church here was St. Helen, who built a chapel at the roots of the burning bush in the 4th century. Και αργότερα ευσυλής από το κράτο ο Ιουστινιανός στον 6ο αιώνα, and later in the 6th century, the Reverend Byzantine Emperor Justinian, who ruled from 527 to 565 AD, built the monastery that we see today, the church, and the massive walls that you see surrounding it, and all the buildings within. And since then, the monastery remains in life. Υπάρχουν και στην Ελλάδα και σε άλλα μέρη οι αρχαιότητες που είναι πρόχριστο, αλλά δεν είναι στη ζωή. Of course, in, in Greece and in other places there are ancient ruins which go back further, but they are not, they are not, they do not continue in life. Αυτό το μοναστήρι ζει συνέχεια τόσους αιώνες, δεν έπαψε να ζει ούτε μια μέρα. Αν είχε πάψει, δεν θα υπήρχε. But the monastery lives so many centuries. In fact, if it had ceased to, to function for even a single day, it would not exist now. Μοναδική ιστορία, λοιπόν, μοναδική, μοναδικά και τα κοιμήλια που υπάρχουν εκεί, οι θησαυροίς της πίστεώς μας. Unique, a unique history and also a unique treasury of spiritual artifacts of our faith. Είδατε Are... στην εικόνα σε ένα βιβλίο αλληγμένο χειρόγραφο, είναι ο συνεχτικός κώδικας, ο περίφημος, που είναι του τετάρτου αιώνες βιβλίο χειρόγραφο. You saw opened the ancient manuscript, the Sinai Codex from the 4th century, which is the oldest manuscript existing of the Bible. There are two others in the world of similar age. The library collection of ancient manuscripts is second in importance in the world. But if you're talking about the icon collection, it's first in the world. Το γύριό μας, αυτή την εγκαυστική που λέμε, που είναι, που είναι του έκτου αιώνας, 1400 χρόνια αιώνα. You saw towards the beginning of the video the encaustic icon of our Lord, which is from the 6th century, 1400 years of age. Και έχει πολλές το μοναστήρι και αρχαίες εικόνες μοναδικές στον κόσμο. The monastery, the monastery preserves many ancient icons unique in the world today. Και δεν είναι μόνο τόσο παλαιά αυτά τα έργα, αλλά είναι και σε αρίστη κατάσταση. Νομίζω ότι τώρα έχουν γίνει αυτά τα έργα. And what's amazing is not just how old these icons are, but the superior condition in which they are preserved is as though they were written today. Τα φύλαξε η έλεγχος εκεί. They were preserved by the remote location, of course, in the desert, this helped. Και φυσικά οι μοναχοί του ενδιαφέρον. Of course, the care of the monks to preserve them. Αλλά και το ξηρό του κλίματος. But the dry climate has also played a major role. The humidity in this area is at the lowest levels which sustain human life. It's the very best climate in the world. And so this climate has played a role in helping the icons to be preserved in such excellent condition up until our own time. So, besides the monastery's unique history with its, in its spiritual <coughs> artifacts of our faith, it's also unique by, in, 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 uh, as regards its way of life. Uh, 
The surrounding desert is populated by our friends the Bedouin tribes. Who love the monasteries. They consider their own home. And, and given that they live in dire poverty, the monastery does everything it can to help them. You heard about the recent political troubles in the Middle East and the news of the, the political turbulence going on in, in Libya, Syria, and Egypt. And from the first moment that these disturbances broke out, the Bedouins immediately uh, took our side. They, Without the monastery asking for their assistance in any way, on their own initiative, they armed their tribesmen, went up into the surrounding mountain passes and down into the checkpoints leading to the monastery with uh, armed in order to make sure to guard the monastery to make sure that nobody could possibly get through from afar with intent to harm the monastery. And they did this without us asking for their help. A friend shows his true colors in times of duress, not when things are going easy. So they showed themselves to be genuine friends of the monastery, that they love it and reverence it. Of course, the monastery does whatever it can to help them. And I personally do have a special weakness for them. And the other monks even uh, criticize me sometimes, telling me, look, you're overdoing it. They're coming to you and they're asking for baraka, which is the Arabic word for a handout, <laughs> which is or a, a blessing. And, you're, and you give them every single time. And, but I say that um, with the way they sprang to our assistance in this recent, with these recent events, I think I'll just give them whatever help I can and let them take advantage of me. Uh, and towards the and towards the end of the video, you saw a manuscript opened out, which is a document written by Ma Muhammad, which is a testament granting special rights and privileges not to the monks and to Christians, which are so strong that it as though it is as though this document was written by a Christian leader. Instead of a signature, Mohammed put his palm print on the document as a signature. Um, in one of the, the talks, which was actually at Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo, there was a doctor in the audience who was a Muslim. Yeah? And this Muslim doctor pointed out to us that most Muslims actually have never heard of the presence of this doctor of this document, and the monastery needs to publicize it much more widely. And I, and I, I plan to take advantage of his suggestion and mention it to the Archbishop when I return to the monastery because people are killing themselves in that part of the world, or they're killing each other, excuse me. So, so those are just a few of the very most basic um, elements of history, a historical background that one needs to say about the monastery because there's so much that you really put, can't get into it. Uh, 
but uh, if anybody would like to ask, uh, ask questions they'd like to ask very, with great pleasure, I'll respond, whether uh, students or professors, anybody at all. Nice. Um, I'm curious that Sinai has its own bishop. Uh, I mean, he, that's his only jurisdiction, right? The monastery? In, uh, from the time of the fourth century, a uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. From the time of the fourth ecumenical council, a decision was taken, uh, and by which the Archbishop of Sinai is also the abbot of the monastery. This is an ecclesiastical situation the church allows. <coughs> And he has the title of the super honorable. I don't know how to say that more correctly. I'm sorry. <laughs> and he's recognized by all the churches. The monastery is completely free. It does not belong anywhere. It's a auto almost settled it simply has a spiritual <coughs> dependence on the Patriarch of Jerusalem. <coughs> in, in other words, when the Archbishop of Sinai, who is elected by the monks of the monastery, he is then um, ordained, is the bishop ordained? Consecrated, he said consecrated by the Patriarch of Jerusalem. So the monastery has no other dependency, uh, economic or otherwise, it maintains its own needs through the Archbishop and the, and the monastics. This is the ecclesiastical position which has uh, has been maintained now over centuries and is accepted and recognized by all the Orthodox churches. Sometimes the question is raised, how are we so independent? Does why doesn't the archbishop uh, why isn't he under somebody else? But given that he is the leader of such a, a historic and important monastery, this is the ecclesiastical order which has taken hold. So, in few words, that's how the administration of the monastery is formed. Okay. Um, I was just wondering if you could say a little bit more about the bush, the burning bush. Um, okay, could you say a little bit more about the burning bush? Let me speak to the Aloy of Parapano, Yakina Yavato. Yayavatus, after it said, come in the Yavato, and in each of the Ibala de Kili, to the view of the sexual. If you open up the book of Exodus in the Old Testament, um, there is explained in detail the history of the burning bush. Okay, uh, so in, a, in summary, this history begins 1,250 years before Christ. Because that's when Moses lived. Okay, he lived um, in the time of the patriarchs um, from, it was 1800 years before Christ. Okay, 
72 families came down with the patriarch Joseph. And to, to, it's in Egypt, though. Mm. If then, uh, 72 families came down with the patriarch Joseph into Egypt, and they developed an entire community. And the Pharaoh became afraid of them because he felt that they could raise, rise up against his administration, his authority, his power. So he gave, out, uh, he gave out a, a command that any Hebrew boy that was born would be killed. So as, as the story of Moses is known, uh, he was placed in a basket in the, in the reeds to, to save his life, and the daughter of Pharaoh found him in the river, and she went down the bay. She told her servants to open, take the basket to open it. And they found the baby inside. It was very beautiful. She adopted it. Moses grew up. He, he grew up as a son of the Pharaoh and, he became, and was given a great authority and power. But it was he learned that he belonged to the people of God. And but he killed an Egyptian and in fear for his life he fled. He came to Mount Horeb. In a great distance. From Cairo, from, from present-day Cairo. Something between 480 and 500 kilometers. And he, he arrived right there where the monastery is situated today. And he found the daughters of Jethro. And he stayed there, became acquainted with them, and Jethro was unusual because he believed in only one God. In those times that was very unusual. So he lived there 40 years, married to one of the daughters. There is water nearby the burning bush, and as he was uh, shepherding the grazing, taking shepherding the sheep of his father-in-law. He saw he saw this paradoxical miracle. This. Uh, this. He saw the bush, the bush putting out fire, flames of fire. But to not be burned up in a natural way, as, should have, as would have been expected. As it says in the Holy Scripture, the bush was burning but not consumed. He went, he went closer to the amazing miracle and he heard the voice which said to him, Moses, the place where the ground in which you stand is holy. Unlatch your sandals, un untie your sandals. So you see in many icons that Moses is, un is taking off his sandal in front of the burning bush. And he heard the voice of God telling him, I am the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one who is. 
Eshi ini ya do ini ya do ini do ipat ipat ini om do ipat. So I am the one who is. I am the one who exists. Και συνέβη αυτό το γεγονός εκεί στο μοναστήρι, με μέσα και πάτως, που είδαμε εσείς. Και στα πρώτα χρόνια του χριστιανισμού, η Αγία Ελένη έκτισε το Ναΐδιο που είδατε μέσα στο σωτηρικό, εκεί πέρα, στο εικόνα, τον τέταρτο αιώνα. So the monastery, the first is found inside the monastery today, and St. Helen in the 4th century built the first chapel there, right at the roots of the burning bush. Και τώρα που με σώζει το πιτό μέχρι σήμερα είναι εκεί μέσα στο και το πηγάδι που βρήκε ο Μωυσής της πόλης του Ιωθώ που ήταν ήρθε εκεί για πρώτη φορά. And also the well is is right there not at a short distance from it the well where the daughters of Jethro were watering their sheep when Moses first met them. Έτσι αυτά με λίγα λόγια το έχει την ανακόδηση της Βάτα. So that's it. In a few words that's a summary of the history of the burning bush. Λέγε. A couple of questions. How does someone become a monk there? And then in the in the uh, video, it talked about uh, being social, the Christian community being social in that desert. What does that? Mean? Uh, what was the first thing that you asked? How does someone become? Oh, a monk? Uh, how does someone become a monk? And what does the word social mean amongst the community of monastics? Postgenitus monachos. Το άλλο δεύτερο είναι γράφει στο βίντεο ότι που μιλάνε στο επόμενο ρίγι ότι όλοι συμμετέχουν σε μία συζήτηση. Για επειδή η χριστιανική αγάπη πρέπει να η κοινότητα η χριστιανική πρέπει να είναι πάντοτε βασισμένη στην αγάπη, στην ενότητα της αγάπης. Τι θα πει ας δηλαδή αυτή η κοινή σχέση της αγάπης. So society, society, terna, si no me estoy equivocando. Terna lo tiene, tiene que no tiene más de una mesa monojón, monojos. Esto es me lo vamos a poner sin arco de hecho, pero si me que ven mi lámpara, pero bueno, aquí es una milana, pero tiene que ser mi abuí. Tipo tal, bueno, es que mi si se dice me toca nada, pues mi abuí, ya no soy. Okay, and and usually and the gathering of people, everybody is talking at once, and there is a a a huge din is raised. Στο μοναστή μαζεύονται όλοι εκεί μετά το μοναστήριο στο Αρκοδαρή και δεν μιλάει ο καθένας, μιλάει ένας ή κάνει μια ερώτηση και ακούνε όλοι όπως τώρα. Whereas in the monastery everybody gathers together for fellowship and only one person speaks at a time or asks a question and everybody else listens. Και έτσι διασώζεται και η κοινωνία, αυτό είναι η αγάπη, να έχει κοινωνία με τον άλλο. So this is true society to have, for one person to have a relationship with all the others. This is the true meaning of society. And now, tora na fisu me na ni. Sti si zit si. We observe me tilai oalu sa dina akri ke tilai oalu sa dina ya. Whereas if we allow a free free for all discussion here and everybody's talking at once, nobody knows what the other person is saying. And let's see. Agad ang duwani akto kules kada kuti oalu ke na pi kinon. So so love requires that one person listen to the others and. And, and, and also have the chance to express his own opinion. And, and this goes further um, and reaches a situation, for instance, where a person is in need of assistance. Whoever can must reach out to help him. In other words, you participate in his pain. You take part in it participate and take part in the other's pain. This is the society of love. The difficult thing, however, is not to participate in the suffering of another. That's not so difficult. What is difficult is to participate in the rejoicing of another. This is very difficult. <coughs> the Holy, Holy Chrysostom says this himself that it's difficult, that it's easy to cry with another, but it's very difficult to rejoice in his happiness. 
Έτσι είναι ο άνθρωπο, δεν ξέρω, ο εγωισμό θα έχει υπερδέψει και θα έχει. So the question is why? Um, the answer is, it seems that egotism has confused things. It seems like one's personal egotism confuses these matters. Τα δύο πολλέ φορέ σε εμά λέμε γιατί η θέα μα να έχει τόσα καλά, να έχει υγεία στο σπίτι του, να έχει παιδιά, και εγώ να μην έχω ούτε υγεία, ούτε παιδιά, ούτε. So, for instance, it's very. Frequently, a person might have a thought like, "Oh, why is so and so enjoying such great health and has houses filled with children, and here I have I have lost my health. I don't have any kids." Ivan, na piso no evoksa to hraftos ehi asta ta gata. So instead say, instead say, "Glory to God, that person has 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 happiness." I rejoice in it as though it were my own. It's, it's my happiness too. His happiness is his happiness is also mine. It's difficult to say that. But this is what authentic love requires of us. Oh, Είχε και μια πρώτη ερώτηση, πώς γίνεται κάποιος μοναχός. Αυτά τα νησίς που λένε στην Ασέρη, μια παρεμία, τα ενήκω. Όχι για σας, πώς, οποιοςδήποτε, όχι για σας, δεν το ρώτησε σε σας, πώς κάποιος μπορεί να γίνει μοναχός. Δεν εξηγείται αυτό, μέσα του γίνει μια αγάπη για το ζώο, δυνατή πάρα πολύ. You cannot explain how a person becomes a monk, a love goes out from him, which is very powerful for God. Σε εδώ μια οικογένεια στη δυνατή, Okay, there's a, a um, in a home recently, the home the, where we were hosted yesterday of Sabros Nashi. Yeah, yeah. The, the family has two sons, one of them was a student here. He went to Greece. He went to Greece. And he went to a monastery and became a monk. Και εδώ οι γονείς δεν το εξηγήσουν αυτό. Parents try to explain this. Ένα παιδί 20 ετών. He was 21 years old, I think. Πήρα αυτή την απόψη για περίπου σε αυτό το παιδί. He took this, he took, he made the decision to abandon all. Το παράδεισο εδώ που βρίσκεται. Αυτό το παιδί, το πράσινο, το παράδεισο. He made the decision. He made the decision to abandon this paradise that we live in here with all this greenery. You see the pain in the parents. But the child, after he was taught, he was taught a lesson. He was taught a lesson. He was taught a lesson. But it was only recently found out that, that, that this young man, at a very young age, had written uh, compositions saying that he wanted to become a monk in Matathos. At a much younger age, he had actually revealed this. So this teacher understood that the, the teacher knew that this, that this boy had the desire within him. Και όπως το άλλο το αντίθετο συνέβη και αυτό είναι, δεν είναι τώρα ακριβώς αυτές τις μέρες, πριν από μένα, που στην Ελλάδα πήγε ένας μεγάλος ιεροκήρυκας έγραμος της οικογένειας, κύριος Παναγόπουλος από τον Ζέρα. Πες το πόσο τέλος. Πες το πόσο τέλος, πες το όλο, το ξέρω. Δεν είναι να το πω σε σχέση με αυτό. Ναι, το ξέρω. Πες το πόσο τέλος. Θα το πω για αυτό. Um, there was a preacher in Greece some time ago named Panagopoulos. He had, uh, <coughs> he had three. <coughs> he didn't have any children, but God gave him a child at an advanced age. He named him Nectarios. His father decided that no matter what, he was going to make this boy into a monk and he sent him off to Mandathos. To the best uh, monastery for the Theo. He stayed there as an augustor for three years. And then he went to Mandathos. And then he went to Mandathos. And then he went to Mandathos. 
Και έφυγε ο άνθρωπο στο παιδί. Κάτι που έλα. Και κατέβηκε κάτι στην Θεσσαλονίκη. Και παντέστηκε και είναι πολύ ευκαιρία. Έχει πέντε παιδιά. Και πήγαινε στην Αθήνα, 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 ότι είναι μια εσωτερική κλίση. Όσο να του πεις ξέρεις ο μοναχισμός είναι ωραία ζωή, αν δεν έχεις μέσα την κλίση, δεν θα πρέπει. What I'm trying to illustrate here is the fact that the choice for monasticism is a, 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 completely, a, a completely interior matter that no one on the outside can influence. <laughs> Είναι εσωτερική υπόθεση, την άκουση, εσωτερική και εσωτερική υπόθεση. So this is an interior and a personal decision. Και δεν εξηγείται. It cannot be explained. Λοιπόν, να πει κάποιος άλλος όμως τώρα, ναι, πάει εκεί. Συγγνώμη, πάει πάνω. Ο κύριος Φίλου, πώς είσαι. Λέγει. Μέμα. I need to ask if, I want to ask, if the monastery the charisma is after, say, St. John Climacus, because he was in the monastery, was he not? He was at Mount Sinai in the 7th century, 6th century. And I noticed in the beginning of the, um, I noticed in the beginning of the video that it had the virtues, the steps, and all, and what I guess I'm asking is, do the monks still follow that very closely? Um, the latter of the Bible said, yeah. Of course, that's what monasticism is all about. <laughs> okay, so the second part. <laughs> and not only do many monastics ascend that ladder, many come crashing down off of it because the, the demons try to affect, try to cause that. But so the second part of that question is how in the world, living in the world, can we follow the steps of St. John Clonicus? Okay, I'll put the second question to say, in a post in Mies, Mies is the cosmos, we are going to move on to the climate of the Naruton. This is the first question that we have to say, that the problem of our society is not easy, it's 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 not easy. So let us remember what a great elder said, the matter of our salvation is neither difficult nor easy. It is simply a matter of carefulness. Because in the New Testament, you can see in the New Testament, if you are out in the monastery, out in the desert, the very best monastery, if you are not careful, if you are not vigilant, you can easily come crashing off the ladder, crashing down. The boy caps and then those who go and you can be, somebody can be here in the world and have reached the very highest rung on the ladder. So if we are, if we are vigilant, we can proceed, we can progress. It simply requires that we be very careful. Because God is love, therefore he would not ask something from people that they were unable to offer him. And one very easy way to do this, I've said it many times, I'll say it one more time, one very easy way to do this is to not judge others. <coughs> this virtue of not judging others leads straight into humility. And this virtue requires no, by this method, this virtue is achieved with no work at all. Uh, a person with no effort at all can judge instantly everyone from the political leaders to the ecclesiastical leaders 
to those on lower down on rungs of authority, everyone. Εγώ στην Ελλάδα από τότε που κατάλαβα τον εαυτό μου, δεν άκουσα να καλό λόγο να λένε οι Έλληνες πολίτες για τους πολιτικούς της πολιτικούς πλέντες. One thing I've noticed is that you never hear a Greek citizen say anything good about their politicians. They can say they're all thieves. They put the burden, they hang the burden for every difficulty straight onto the politicians. But that's not true. I have a question. I think the question earlier was how does a monk end up at Sinai as a monk? Oh, okay. And then my question would be what is a mother to do if their son wants to be a monastic? But they find themselves following a Yerunda who's not in good standing with the Orthodox Church. Okay. A renegade. Okay. Um, if the, 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 the way one becomes a monastic in Sinai is the same as it is for any other monastery in Greece or wherever. Because um, the Sinai monastery is in the desert, which is a difficult environment. And in an environment indeed which is not Christian but Muslim, if there's a special difficulty there, and so it requires greater strength and, and will for somebody to, to become a monk there. And, and, and the, the prospective month needs to be older, 20 year, at, at least 20 years old and older, because a, mat a certain maturity is required. Below 20 years, it's not going to, probably not going to happen. Another difficulty the prospective monk has to will encounter there is the high elevation in which the monastery is found in 1600 meters, like something like 5,000 feet. It's, it's a desert. Here you're swimming in greenery, and there it's just the opposite. And the green leaf there is a luxury. <laughs> You can walk an entire day through the desert and not find water. So, so you can see for yourselves that it requires greater strength and and uh, decision for a monk to say, I'm going to remain here for my whole life. <coughs> Some years ago, we had a monk who is now in Utah, Father Makarios. Um, back then, the Egyptian government, government had formed a uh, plan of building a cable car to the top of Mount Sinai. <laughs> of course, the monastery didn't want this. The monastery struggles until today to keep the, the surrounding environment in its natural state. And um, uh, Father Makarios um, had, had publicly stated his uh, objection to this plan in a, for, in a formal manner. And they blacklisted him. So, 
He was, he, he could no longer live in Egypt. When communism was at its height, somebody in America said, I can go into the central square of the country and proclaim that the president should be de, um, taken from power. And a communist said, I, I can also go out to the central square of Moscow and I can also say down with Nixon. He <laughs> 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 got freedom too. <laughs> So we lost Father Makario. <laughs> 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 he said in order to affect any political change there, you have to do it in a very indirect way. You have to go around in a circle, not straight. <coughs> that was, I think Sadat was in power then. <laughs> and, and, and the uh, the cable car, of course, was did not happen. Um, <coughs> what should a parent do when his child wants to become a monk but goes to a yeruda who is not accepted by who is a rogue? Who you said not accepted. Okay. Okay, so the, 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 the responsibility of the parent is to say to his child, if you want to become a mom, first of all, be sure that given that this is your own choice and you have not made this decision under the influence of anybody else, um, be sure that you go to a food Okay, so be sure that given that the child has made this decision on his own, you counsel him, be sure that you go to an elder who is in communion with the church, at, with the body of the church at large, Do, don't, don't choose anybody who is outside the canonical church. The Patriarchate of Jerusalem and the Sunday Monastery both follow the old calendar. Up until today. But we have spiritual communion with the other churches of Greece and around the world that are following the new calendar. The thing that interests us above all is union. And the calendar, that's a human matter, but the unity of the church is what concerns us above all other issues. And for this reason, other churches, other patriarchates who did not change their calendar are yet in communion, in unity with the Church of Greece, for instance, which did change its calendar. So these matters require discernment. Discernment. 
πολύ να δείτε να κάνεις αυτές τις ερωτήσεις γιατί είναι λεπτά τα ζωή. These are these are matters with nuance. One must be very careful how he navigates them. Η ερωτήση για τον άνθρωπο είναι να καταλάβω ότι είναι πολύ καλά και απαντάω συγκεκριμένα σε αυτό που σημαίνει. Άλλο το καταλάβω σαν το συγκεκριμένο. Και λέω ότι θα προσέξει ο άλλος όταν πρόκειται το παιδί να πάει σε μια παράδοξη και πέρα της να έχει η παράδοξη δεν θα να έχει κοινωνία με όλη την εκπαιδευσία. Αυτό δεν ρώτησα. Όχι, δεν ρώτησα αυτό. Ρώτησα αφού το παιδί έχει πάρει. Αυτό σε κάποιο τέτοιο. Και εμείς θα το πούμε. Έχει πάει, είναι εκεί. Άμα πάει, μπορείς να έχει ψήσει μετά, είναι δύσκολο να φύγει από το ζωή. Αν το πούμε. Αν το παιδί έχει πάει, το παιδί έχει πάει, είναι δύσκολο να φύγει από το ζωή. Γιατί το παιδί έχει πάει, εγώ είμαι στην αλήθεια. Η παράταξή μου είναι η αλήθεια και είναι δύσκολο. Γιατί το παιδί έχει πάει, είναι δύσκολο να φύγει από το ζωή. Και το παιδί έχει πάει, είναι δύσκολο να φύγει από το ζωή. Και ο Χριστό μα είπε στη δική του προσευχή που κάνει το παραδο οι πιστεύοντες εσύ σε μένα είναι όσοι εν, δηλαδή να είναι ενωμένοι όλοι οι πιστεύοντες σε μένα. Κατά τη σιωθόξη εγγλήσε, όπως οι προτεστάντες που δουλειοί είχος ακόμα και εκατόν, η σιωθόξη έχει κάθε επαρχία της Λάζανε και ένας αρχιεπίσκοπος σε μια σύνοδος και να είναι δεξάρτητα μια κοινωνία μου. Μια σιωθήτηση βέβαια, αυτό είναι πολύ θύμα. This is a very difficult situation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to ask you a question. I have a question for you. I have a question for you. Όταν ένας είναι αρκετοί οι οποίοι έχουν επηρεαστεί και είναι ευλογία Θεού που επηρεάζονται από την παρουσία α, μοναστηρίων εδώ στην Αμερική, διότι παλιότερα δεν είχαν μοναστηρία. Αλλά πολλές φορές α, επηρεασμένοι από τις α, συμβουλές που δίνουν ορισμένοι γέροντες, δεν ακολουθούν πάντοτε την επίσημη γραμμή της Εκκλησίας και οπωσδήποτε παρουσιάζονται πολλές φορές α, εντάσεις. Τι μέλλον είναι στη σημεία τέτοια κατάσταση. Είναι, είναι κάτι το οποίο το ζούμε και δεν ακόμη έχει βρεθεί μία λύση που από την μία πλευρά να δίνει την υποστήριση την ευρωπαϊκή που χρειάζεται αλλά την άλλη πλευρά να μην υποτιμά και την αυθεντία της συνοχησίας. Είχε μόνο αυτό και την ελευθερία του προσώπου. I'm sorry, I didn't allow you. No, it's not your fault. Did you understand the thrust of my question? The question is, what do we do when a person receives spiritual counsel from a monastery which is not in line with the official position of the church at large? And especially spiritual fathers who don't always conform to the general uh, practice of the relationship. και μας απάντησε ότι να απαιτηθείτε στο δημιουργικό πατήριο και να το συμβούσε την έγκριση των δέντων στους κρυπτέους. The Sinai Monastery had asked some years ago of the former Archbishop of America for permission to create a branch monastery here in America. And we were, the answer we received directed us to approach this matter to the Patriarchate of Constantinople. The Patriarchate of Constantinople denied our request. Και τώρα άκουσα την επόσταση που είναι στην Αμερική, δέκα μοναστήρια. Now I've heard that there are how many new monasteries in America? Ten. 
και στην Ελλάδα πριν από χρόνια δεν υπήρχε αυτή η αγάπη στο μαγιστήριο. Επίσημα η Ελοκύρικα είχε πει ότι στο κρατήριο, σα λέω, να γίνεται καλοί άνθρωποι, αλλά όχι και μοναχοί. In a former generation in America, in Greece, there was an official position also against monasticism in Greece. Um, uh, the, the, spirit, the spiritual leaders, the, the, the Ierokirikas, the preachers, told the young people, um, listen, you become good people, but that doesn't mean that you go to a monastery. There was an actual, actually an official position, or not, I don't know if it was official, but there was a strong position against monasticism. Now, is a, now the opposite is observed, a return towards monasticism. In Greece, also here. So we who, we who have the responsibility of leading spiritual life for monasteries must be very, very careful about this to make sure that this return to, to monasticism is done in the right way, in accordance with the in accordance with our Orthodox tradition. <coughs> we read in the life of St. Anthony the Great when he went to live in a cave, which was before the time of the monasteries existed. The Paul the Simple came outside his cave and asked to remain there with him. St. Anthony left him three days outside his door and didn't open it to him. And there were wild beasts in those days around. Finally, he, finally had the idea, he thought, what if an, a wild beast comes and attacks this man outside my door, I'll feel guilty about it. So he opened the door. And Paul was at least 60 years old, he was advanced in age, and uh, St. Anthony began uh, a dialogue with him to see, to see what he had come there to do. He asked him, what are you, what are you here for? So I want to become a monk. So he began to prepare him. Whatever St. Anthony told him, he did it. And so it was clear that he was prepared to become a monk. St. Anthony didn't say, come here and stay with me, we'll get along just great, you'll see how much you like it. So when once, once somebody wants to start a monastery, they, they have to be examined carefully. What are you here to do? What's your goal? What are you, what are you all about? <coughs> so when, oh, I'm sorry, when a person comes to a monastery to become a monk, the, the administration has to very carefully look into what are his reasons for being there. Um, and not just accept him at the first instance. So, so the monastery has to, uh, it has to test out this person's <coughs> will. Why is he there? Does he have the genuine desire to live the monastic life? Yet is the problem of being the all the athletes who are we notice that in the society, people get married and almost without exception, they regret it. No, no, he didn't say almost, excuse me, he didn't say, you know, he tweeted off this. He didn't say without exception, he said most of them, the majority of them regret it. He didn't say without exception. This is quite easy, basically. Because the, the married life is not an easy thing, let's face it. And on a big one, 
However, for a person to regret that he became a monk is a very serious thing. So it's a heavy, a heavy thing. That's why Christ said that everybody is not for this monastic life. Or everybody is not for this life. Because if everybody became a monk, there would be nobody left in society. What is the name of the last one? Is Πάτε το καλοκαίρι επισκέφθηκα το μοναστήρι και είδα γύρω οι Βεδουίνοι είναι τόσο εξυπηρετικοί και καλοί. Υπάρχουν Βεδουίνοι που ασπαστήκαν την Ορθοδοξία. Εκεί πέρα and uh, very, uh, had very good relations with the monastics, and I'm wondering, did any of them become Christians? You said, you said that with the Christian spirit, because you live here in the land of, of, of freedom. And everyone believes whatever he wants to believe. And he doesn't have to answer to anybody for what he believes. In those countries, however, there is no such freedom. <coughs> And they're afraid of each other. If a Bedouin becomes a Christian, he's going to have to leave the area. He's going to have to probably leave the country. So the monastery stays far from these issues. There is no freedom of religion in these countries. <clears throat> um, there's been recently, with the Arab uprising in the Muslim world, some attacks against some of these monasteries, <coughs> specifically Coptic monasteries. And um, as your honor just pointed out, there is a danger, and so uh, is the monastery um, at all concerned about this development in Egypt? That's my first question. Is the monastery uh, <laughs> concerned about but, the attacks on the Coptic monasteries? Yeah, and, and any threat to themselves. Um, and what can we do to help raise awareness about that? Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> 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 The other, my other question. Um, we do the, 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 the Sunday monks are not concerned about attack because the Bedouins or the surrounding Bedouins uh, have shown it's just the opposite intentions when they took up arms on their own initiative and went out to defend the monastery from attack. And um, another, another thing is uh, uh, some, offer some protection to the monasteries is high elevation. People from Egypt down to the lower elevations have difficulty 
with the environment, the physical environment at the high elevation, they, they, they can't stay there for a long period of time. The Bedouins can live up there, they're, they're, acclimate, they're accustomed to it, others can't. Okay, then you have a second question? Um, more of a question about social media. <coughs> thing I've been thinking about, um, and hopefully uh, I don't know if you offer some advice. Um, the question is, how can we see others the way God sees them? What can we do to... How can we see others the way God sees them? Love for us is not an emotion. The love which Christ taught, the love which Christ taught is not an emotion. Each person is an icon of God. This is in the Holy Scripture that man is created in the image of God. <coughs> we do not all have the likeness of God. This, this is only this is only the truth taught to for only we Orthodox Christians believe in this truth. A person, after he has conducted the struggle to free, to become free from evil, from sin, only after he has conducted this struggle to become purified of sin can he achieve the likeness of God. In fact, we are created to love, not to hate. So to see, we come to if the country signomic sex the brother we must have as many ojina misuma and agapana, the country of the baby. Did we say right before that? In our nature. Oh, this is in our nature. It's in our nature to love. Even the ancient Greeks had discovered this, that human beings are created to love, that it's in their nature. So love for us goes out very far. It's not just a matter of loving the one who loves you, but also the one who doesn't love you. This is where the, this, the difficulty begins. But if you want to talk about love in Christ, this is what it is. So being icons of God, we have to resemble God in our own love. I said, I'm not tired, but I just need some air. <laughs> <laughs> I love the 1600 meters, and it's hard for me down at, of course, the humidity level isn't the humidity either. Now, I'm going to talk about the security of the people who are in the post for the moment, and I'm going to talk about the security of the people who are in the I went back to your question. I said, but how can we look at, look at others as God does when we don't feel like it? How can we love them when we don't? He said we have to love them. Yeah, 